Hey there, viewers. Welcome back to Ray of All Trades. Next one on the bench is a Troy built four cycle string trimmer. It's the uh, TB685EC model. Complete with a regular string trimmer head. Not even opened up the gas cap yet, and I can tell you that this thing's got a really potent odor of old gasoline. So let's get this thing drained out. We're going to use my new funnel that I did a review on to see how much water is inside this fuel. Well, the best I can tell is it's quite a bit because it's got nothing else coming out. And it is below that uh, level that I've talked about before, you know, that would have caught the water. So there was a lot of water inside that gasoline. Well, that's one thing that would have kept it from running. I'm going to go ahead and pull the end off of this. Make it a little easier to manage. Let's take a quick look and see what's going on before we add some fresh gas to it. It doesn't look like it's got a lot of use. Air filter looks and smells clean. Throttle moves easy. Looks like it has decent compression. Let's pull the plug and see if it still has decent compression or see if it uh, pulls over nice and easy like I'm hoping it will. Yeah, plug is saturated, basically. It's all wet, got a little bit of dirt on it. Let's make sure it pulls over easy now. Oh yeah, nice and easy. So we're not dealing with a scored cylinder, but based on everything that I'm smelling, I'm just immediately gonna go ahead and clean that carburetor out and check those fuel lines while I'm at it. Yeah, T25 torque screw. So I'm getting hung up back there. Let's go ahead and take this cover off so I can see what I'm getting hung up on. Looks like my cover screws are just a little bit longer than my air filter holder screws. I got one right over here. right up in the front. It's the same length as the other two I pulled out of the back part. So we're gonna leave those lines on there for right now. So I'm not sure that I've ever seen this design before. This primer has actually got three lines going to it. Uh, yeah, it's got three lines going to that thing. So we're gonna leave it in, in place until uh, I can get to it to see easily what's occurring. It looks like a breather hose back here. Okay, that breather hose connected right there to there. And let's see throttle cable, just a little uh, Z bend right there. Let's see, one hose here. One hose there. Looks like this green. I don't know if that's the pickup or the return, but it's broken off right here. And then I've got this hose up on the top. 
So the one that's got that bend to it goes to the top. So what is the green hose? Is that the filter or is that the return? So a green hose would be return because I can look in there and see. So the green hose is right there and it literally was just the return. So this hose right here is my filter. Goes all the way down to the bottom, which would have meant that any kind of fuel that was circulating would have just spilled out right there. If anybody's wondering why that fuel looks like it's not pre-mixed, it's because it's not. This is a four cycle. Actually has oil in the bottom of the motor, very similar to a uh, regular lawnmower engine. It's got valves that you adjust, runs uh, straight gas. fairly confident that the diaphragm is extremely stiff. Internally it doesn't look too bad though. As far as dirt and debris. Pull the barrel out. We're going to put this thing in the ultrasonic cleaner. And just to make sure it gets clean and then see if I can get these gaskets to free up and loosen up so that I can get a better look at this metering diaphragm. I have a feeling this metering diaphragm is shot. Um, I think it's just extremely stiff. So, but I won't know until I can get it off of here and see if there's something below, you know, above that that's actually stopping it. And that's what I'm feeling because it definitely isn't moving like it should, or at least what I expect. All right, let's see what we got. Can you guys hear that? That's that diaphragm. So this one never gonna um, work unless I can get that exact same diaphragm. Let me clean this out and see if I have one. Just using, it sounds like a lot, but I'm not using that much air. So let me see if I have one of these gaskets, see if I have something that actually comes close to matching. We might be in luck. 
Looks like that dimple right there appears to be about the same height as that one. And the holes look like they line up. Those seem to line up. I can't believe how bad that got. This might actually be worth trying. I mean, I can throw a carburetor at this thing really quickly, but let's see if we can save what we have here. Spring goes first. Then we put on our fuel pump, which also has the reed valves on it that block up these holes right here. So let's put that back on. Okay. Then the next thing is this gasket. It has locator pins on it. Then the metering diaphragm. And then the cover. There's a hole in the cover. It doesn't matter which way it goes. It's literally just for air to be able to enter. Put the four screws in, let's tighten it up. And the barrel, let's see if I can remember which way this went on there. Pretty sure it's keyed, so it only goes in there one way. Let's see if it was like that. Because it goes like that. Yeah, that way right there won't fit because there. So it can only go on this way. Those metering diaphragms, I buy them in bulk because a lot of times that's the only problem. Don't forget your O-ring. Put that back on for sealing up. All right, we need to change some fuel lines out here. Let me get my bag of fuel lines and let's start matching them up one for one. Let's go ahead and temporarily mount carburetor. And the only reason I'm doing this is to make sure I knew which, which line went where. So this line which is my fuel filter. Let's go ahead and get this one out. Okay, this line was that long. Yeah, I think we're gonna try to use that line right there. Let's get a good measurement. All right there. I'm gonna give it just a little bit extra in case I have to use uh, like a fishing tool or something. When it's snug like that, I usually take an awl and I'll open this up just a little bit. You'll see here in just a second. So right now, 
because um, I'm going to end up cutting this at an angle to help push it in there. I'm just trying to see how close it is. And since it's somewhat tight, I'm just going to take an awl or a, um, a pick that's rounded and just kind of work it around inside there and just open it up a little bit. Yeah, that's really close. That almost goes in immediately. Let's cut a little bit of an angle on the bottom here. Good thing I've made it a little longer, huh? Get that with some pliers. Cut it flat. Yeah, that hose felt pretty good, but you can tell that it was it was time to change that gas line. Just when I tried to pull on it, it's just basically spreading apart. Okay, let's get that down inside and then pull this back up through. And it makes my bend onto the carburetor right there. And on this cover, we know that the green line is the return. This black line goes to uh, the spot down here. And then there's one with the bend on it, circles around and comes up to here. So let's do those one at a time. Pull off this sleeve for a second. Let's grab those one at a time. So the green line which we know is the return. And since it broke off, we need to make it a little bit longer than what it is. Let's pull this off so you and I can work on it together. Pull that primer out. Hopefully I don't forget to put it back on or fish it through there. loose that one's loose and that one's actually already loose so good all right so let's start off with the green line so we'll just figure it a little bit longer for the return side goes on there and then this side here drops straight back into the tank so again we're going to put a uh, little bit of a cut on the end of it and I think we need to open it up just a little bit you see why I temporarily mount the carburetor right I don't have to remember every single routing and whatnot because when you put new lines on the bends are now gone right so that's a little bit tight, slight angle, and let's put the all on that one too. So for this one, I don't have to worry about cutting that, uh, that angle that I put back because literally it's just a return. Because literally it's just a return going back into the tank. 
there's no filter on the end or anything like that. The next line is this short one. back on the primer. Remember the short one went down to this barb down here. And I'm already figuring out that I needed to fish this thing back through. Give me one second. I almost forgot. All right, let's pull this one back off for a second. Fish it right back through. Snap the primer back in place. So it's kind of offset, so you have to put it on a certain way. All right, let's get that, that line put back in place. So that's my return. Let's get it back on. So can you guys see it? All right, so now my return's put back on. This one here, goes to the very bottom of my carburetor, right? Right there. And then the longest line, let's see, is this long enough to reach? Nope, need some more. All right, so we know what we're dealing with here. Let's move this over to the side. Get the carburetor mostly in place. So it looks like, okay, I'm gonna put some fuel in this and I wanna watch the path of the fuel flow, make sure that we're correct. Hold on one second. Okay, I expect to see that it's gonna draw the fuel up out of the tank through the carburetor, up into this line, and then spit some of it back down into here. And I'm anticipating some of it goes back down into here. All right, I see it coming up out of here. Let me keep priming. Oh, and now it's coming up out of this hose. I see it coming back through here. Did I accidentally reverse these two lines? There you go, that looks a little bit better. Fuel is coming up. Fuel is then coming. I see it going back into the tank and I see it coming up here. And I also see it. Supplying up here. I think I had reversed a couple of those lines somewhere along the way. 
I'll see it when I watch the video. See, I like the routing for that one. I like the routing for that one. I'm not positive about the routing for this one yet. We may change that one. So don't forget the breather line. My O-ring. those started see where we're at Not spitting fuel out like it was, but we might be good there. Okay, they had put this around those three lines and a couple of tie wraps. Longer screws went in the cover. Two on the back, one on the front. I do know that I had to uh, turn my idle speed screw out. I'm just gonna push it back in until I see where the shiny part is gone. So this is just my idle speed screw. Now let's put in the two side screws. Short one on this side. And the other short one on this side. Might have to loosen up that cover to put on the exhaust side. I just remembered that. All right, let's give it a try. I already primed it up. It says uh, press 10 times, squeeze and hold the throttle, pull five times, didn't start, repeat steps one through three. All right, so hold the throttle, I guess.
got that one done. Troy built TB 685 EC. Fixed for cost of a, a little bit of labor, some fuel line, and a carburetor gasket. So I hope y'all got something out of the video. Really appreciate you watching. I'll catch you on the next one.